What's happening everybody? Welcome back. It's Nick Olson, Chupacabra Off-Road. And today let's talk about tires. Let's talk about how these Tensor DS33s are holding up. So full disclosure, I didn't get these tires for free. I purchased them, got a pretty good deal on them through uh, my friends at Temecula Motorsports. The MSRP on these things is 350 bucks a tire and they've recently put them on sale probably due to the coronavirus epidemic. Um, right now on their website, you can buy them for a little under $300 and I think the street price has always been there a little bit lower. So this definitely is, if not the most expensive, one of the most expensive options on the market for us here in the Southwest are looking for an all around amazing desert tire. So once Tensor first appeared on the side by side scene with the regulator tires, it seemed like they always had a really good brand. Uh, perception, quality. So from what I heard, a lot of people really liked the Tensor regulator. They were a little on the heavier side. And then once the Tensor DS32 came out, that seemed to be like a holy grail 32 inch tire because it was so light. That was a, more of a race specific tire. Same thing we're seeing here with the Tensor DS33. This is definitely designed as a race specific tire, but a lot of us are looking to buy, use this as an everyday tire like myself. I'm curious how well do they hold up? What's the performance? How are they and can we put 2,000, 2,500 miles on them before they completely wear out? So I've always been a weight snob. This goes back to my bicycle days where one pound of rotational weight is equal to three or four pounds of weight on the bicycle. And when I was the motor, I definitely did a lot of suffering and realized that. The Tensor DS tires seem like I have really good specs with a tall tire with a really light weight. First they launched the 35 DS, which is about 44 and a half pounds. And more recently they came out with this 33 inch option. Now, before I purchased this Turbo S behind me, I was really wanting to go with some 35 inch tires. I thought they looked awesome. But once the 33 came out, it was lighter. Um, it looked almost as big as the 35. A lot of off-road situations I've been in with 32s, I've had a pretty good ground clearance. I'm talking from Moab to most type of desert running, Arizona Peace Trail, kind of everywhere in between. The 32s have really proven to provide a lot of ground clearance. So, a little extra definitely didn't hurt with the 33, but I, once these came out, I decided to give them a shot. They were lighter weight than the stock tires that came on this vehicle, and I thought they'd really help with the braking acceleration. And also that peace of mind that I'm not gonna be putting additional wear on all the drivetrain components. When you compare them to all the competition, they're definitely the lightest tires on the market, particularly for a 33 inch tire. So according to the website, the upper weight optimized rib protection it prevents punctures. They also have a 1600 pound load rating, and the proprietary nylon bias ply with fiberglass belted construction saves weight over steel. One other point that I think is nice that they mention, most of these vehicles that you put on, of course, are CVT belt driven with X3s and Polaris razors, is their evolved closed tread pattern, which reduces drivetrain strain without reducing traction. So when you first look at the tread pattern, it definitely doesn't look like it's going to be as aggressive or work as well as some of the other options out there, but they are thinking about the strain on the drivetrain uh, and trying to maximize the traction. As it stands right now, my Razor's got about 1,200 miles on it. The first 300 I did with the ITP Coyotes, which came stock on this vehicle, a good tire, a little on the heavy side, but good. And I've also been racing my race car with some ITP Ultra Cross R-Spec tires throughout the year as well. So got a lot of experience with those tires and if you're interested in hearing about how those did with a tire I previously ran, which was the BF Goodrich KR2 Baja, we'll link that uh, video that I did in the description below. It's really good. The BFG is an amazing tire as well. And the ITP Ultra Cross is a really good tire for the money. So here's an up close shot of what they look like compared to my brand new spare tire, which I haven't had to use yet. No issues with any flats. And I've been running the tires anywhere between 7 PSI out in the dunes to 12 to as much as 16 PSI. So let's talk about some of the environments I've taken these tires to and where I ride in general and why I am a, a weight snob. So starting off with Rocky Point, Mexico. Took the Razor down there, did some riding in that area. That area is pretty sandy and there's a popular ride that I've done a couple times with some friends, which is a point to point ride down to El Golfo, which is about 80, 85 miles round trip. It's pretty much all sand, there's some whoops, and this type of ride requires us to carry all of our extra fuel, our clothes, food, snacks, all that type of thing. This type of ride requires us to have our cars loaded down with extra fuel, clothes, food and drinks for an entire day and a long weekend ride. So 
I've seen a lot of issues with uh, people breaking belts, people breaking rear radius rods, myself included. That ride ends up being pretty hard on these vehicles. Another ride that I did, which was the first for me, was out in Holtville, which is on the backside of Glamis. It is also a sandier environment. It sucked a lot of fuel and it also sucked quite a bit of horsepower. Another reason why I like having a lighter tire. Another environment that I ride a couple times a year is Sand Hollow in Southern Utah. Now here's some footage when I took the DS's uh, over Thanksgiving to visit my family and it was really wet, it was really cold. It was probably the best conditions I've ever seen out there in Sand Hollow. Um, no matter what tire you had, the traction was gonna be really good. And surprisingly, those Magic Utah rocks are grippy even when it's wet. So um, another environment where you can't run paddles, there's too many rocks, a lighter weight tire is preferred. And then if you do wanna get into some rock crawling uh, situations, there's a lot of trails and terrain like that in Sand Hollow. Another environment I took them out to was Superstition, Placer City, OHV area on the other side of Glamis, closer to San Diego. It's what you typically expect in the southwest. It's slippery, uh, there's some sand washes, there's some fast whoop sections, there's some rocky stuff. We've done a, a race out there in our race car as well. Pretty rough terrain, uh, all, all different types of terrain out there in terms of, of high speed, a little bit tighter washes, flowy type of terrain and it was a good environment to test these out in as well. Getting into the rockier side, I took these tires and tested them in Arizona. Out here at Geyser Loop was where we film a lot and do a lot of suspension testing with the race car, as well as the surrounding area on some of the trails around Lake Pleasant, which include riding up near around the Crown King area, which is a ride I did recently. It was slower speed, it was rocky, it was technical. It was definitely a different environment than kind of everything I had mentioned. It was good to kind of switch it up and see how these tires worked in that environment. We had a lot of stream crossings, uh, good traction as a whole because we've had a lot of rain this year. And finally, I took these things out to Glamis for a weekend um, about a month ago, right after some rain. So it was fun to try it out. I had the whole Razor loaded down with my family. Um, decided to try these out versus my Sandcraft Destroyer paddle tires. Worked really good. I ran the tensors down at seven PSI and led the rides all weekend. No belt failures and it worked really good. So I was planning on having another 500 miles of product testing on these tires for the Arizona Peace Trail, but unfortunately our ride was canceled. And next month, uh, Rally on the Rocks and Moab was another event I was planning on taking these to, which I thought would have been the ultimate all around Southwest test. But unfortunately that event got pushed back due to the coronavirus, of course. So still have a good reference point, a lot of different riding areas, kind of give you guys a feel of what I thought about them. So let's talk about how I thought the tires performed in each of these environments. So starting off with Rocky Point, I didn't do a whole lot of riding when I was down there here on the Tensors. I've ridden down there several times. It is loose and slippery. Um, first thing that comes to mind as it leads to everything is the 33 inch tires are noticeably taller than the 32s. Uh, it doesn't sound like it would be much, but I almost haven't scraped the bottom of this razor at all since I've had it. Initially when I had the razor set up, it was a little on the high side. I'm running about 16 inches of ground clearance in the rear with the 33s and it is pretty amazing. It's noticeable when you guys bump up to these 33s. And it's definitely a nice feature benefit of running these tensors is they weigh about as much or less than a lot of 32 inch tire options on the market. So getting back to Rocky Point, fast whoop sections, slippery, uh, going on some turns where it's kind of bermed, the tires definitely seem to hook and hold really well. That's the type of stuff that makes me a little on edge with a new tire. You're hoping when you're going fast above 50 miles an hour and you're skating around some turns that when it is slippery that the tires are gonna hook and prevent you from blowing the turn. So, and I will say when the tires break loose, they break loose pretty predictably. For the Holtville ride, which was the outskirts of Glamis, that had some really fun terrain, uh, some more whoops, some fun twisty turn sections, some higher speed stuff. And one section right as we were leaving Dooner's Diner, we were going pretty fast. We were going over 60 miles an hour. It was slippery on top. There were some flowing turns. I could really kind of see how they worked in a high speed scenario. And, they're really predictable, even with 16 pounds. Uh, when they did break loose, again, they were consistent. They didn't do anything funny. They had quite a bit of traction. So moving on to Sand Hollow, Utah, this environment definitely sucks a lot of horsepower. Nice to have the lightweight Tensor DS when I was running up there. It was really moist here, as you can see with the footage. The traction was really good. The tires were even grippy on the lower speed rock sections, which I didn't do too much of when I was out there. I like going up and down the dunes quite a bit and doing some higher speed stuff. but. When the tracks were grooved up, there's a lot of ruts. This thing works really well. It's the weight of the vehicle that might push you through a soft berm and have you to blow out, but it wasn't necessarily the tire's fault. So even though the tread pattern isn't bigger and blockier like an ITP Coyote, again, I thought the tires were really consistent even when it's slippery 
or even when you're in some ruts and uh, you're going to a scenario where the tire may want to push through a rut. So the Arizona riding was some good terrain. It was really surprising. We we're kind of going slow, really rocky, and um, again, loved the clearance. And I thought we'd have some more wheel spin, but the tires hooked up really well. So I was surprised how well they hooked up on the loose rocks, the slow speed stuff, the ground clearance was really appreciated. I think the wider tread is nice or a little bit wider than the BFGs, which I think is probably the most comparable tire when you talk overall performance. Um, I like the little bit of extra width when you're talking the slower, rocky stuff. That's something I was really hoping to see once I take these things to Moab, which we probably still get to just later in the year. But um, overall, really, really surprised how well it worked over the rocks. Um, didn't have a lot of wheel spin. Superstition, when we're out there riding, we're shooting some footage with our lights, trying to do a little light review video. And that's one of the first times I really got to push this thing on the hard pack with these tires. And I came away thinking that these tires really are predictable. We were driving pretty hard. We were trying to drive these vehicles through some of these tight washes about as fast as we could and get some cool footage. And in some of those slippery, faster turns, I really thought these tires were predictable. And finally in Glamis, I ran these things down to seven PSI. Didn't have to really worry about it because I've got the B locks here with the method wheels. Um, I could definitely feel the sidewalls rolling over in a lot of turns. Had my razor all loaded down with the family and I was leading rides all weekend. So we're going at a decent pace. I wouldn't call it really, really fast, but uh, no belt issues. I could smell the belt here and there. The dunes were really wet from some rain we had right before we got out there. But the tires worked surprisingly well. One thing I will say, if you take these out there and it's wet like that, of course you can get a lot of rain ruts out in Glamis and these tires are noticeably plusher than my paddle tires. So I probably won't do it again. I'll probably keep my paddles on. Uh, you can definitely feel the acceleration of the paddles. Obviously the peace of mind of not having to burn belts. Most people that do have belt issues have them out in the sand dunes. So having much lower rotational weight is going to help with that acceleration. It's easier to do with paddle tires, but for what it was, for what we can try them out, it was really fun. So in summary guys, 300 bucks, these tires are definitely not cheap, but no flats, they haven't contributed to any belt issues. Definitely showing some signs of wear, and I think if I rode a lot in really rocky situations, like around Havasu, um, Northern Arizona, Arizona in general, these things would wear, and I think they'd probably pretty smoked around 1,800 to 2,000 miles. So. I'm not sure what you guys think. I'd like to see any of these tires get us 2,000 miles with a little bit of tread left to call them you know, decent in terms of reliability and wear. To Tensor's credit, this is designed as an all-out race tire. I do think there's other tires on the market that are probably going to wear a little bit longer. I have some buddies that have ran the Coyotes and seem to be holding up really well past 2,000 miles. So it really depends on how heavy your vehicle is, how much you ride in really rocky terrain. I think when it comes down to the money, you're talking 300 bucks. You have to compare these, in my opinion, to the BFG KR2 Baja tires. Those Baja tires have amazing traction. They hold up really well. Uh, they're a little bit narrower, which I think I prefer the wider profile of, of these tensors. But comparable price point, they're both designed as an all-out race tire that you can also, of course, use on your for your daily adventures and trips. So. I think these two, in my opinion, at this moment in time, are what I would consider the top options. And there's several other options that are really good. It just kind of boils down to, you know, what type of deal are you getting on those? You know, are you willing to sacrifice a couple extra pounds? Yes, I think you can run 44, 45 pound tires on your X3, on your Turbo S, and it's gonna be fine. You might have some additional wear and tear on your drive line compared to these. The Tensor is really hard to beat in terms of lightweight and your ground clearance. The Tensor DS33 is all race proven. Brandon Sims just won the Mint 400 on these tires. As it leads to racing, I might be putting a set of these on my race car once my ITPs wear out. Um, they're definitely on the pricey side, so that's a consideration as I think about what's the best bang for your buck for a race tire when I'm gonna have to buy eight of them for my race car. Gotta have you know several spares, of course. And then in terms of like how many races do I think they'll last. But I think Tenzer has a really good tire, guys. I hope this gives you a little bit of perspective. So I hope this gives you some food for thought if you want to spend the dough on them. I really like them. I love how they look. The lightweight is definitely beneficial for the acceleration, the peace of mind of not having to burn a belt. That's why I decided to go with these. I think they probably do as good or better job than any other tire. When you think about the big picture, performance, lightweight, ground clearance, not burning belts. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys like the content. If you do, please like and subscribe. And we've got a lot more coming your way.